Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles, and I welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. We all know that basketball is a game uh, that is dominated by um, American-born players. This is no secret, right? The NBA is dominated by American-born players, and in fact, I think over 80% or roughly 80% of the players in the NBA today are, you know, are born in the States. And roughly all the major media voices that cover the sports are usually American voices like the Stephen A. Smith, Skip Bayless, uh, you know, Shannon Sharp, all of them, right? All the major voices that you hear talk about sports, a lot of them, um, you know, are from the States. And there's a certain bias uh, that they tend to put forward. Sometimes they realize it, sometimes they don't. Sometimes I think they're fully unaware of it. And sometimes the viewers, whenever we do this type of Giannis videos, a lot of these guys in the comment section, the people that watch the videos, they're like, you know, you don't realize the reason that they're doing this because of blah, 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 X, Y, and Z, right? So there's this kind of thing happening there, this dichotomy taking place in society in terms of, you know, the NBA and really what we're um, what we're talking about uh, here right now. And I've always felt uh, that what we're witnessing right now in the NBA is the globalization of the sport. The NBA, as we're looking at it right now, is currently going through globalization, although uh, the NBA has had some foreign-born players that were really good, and I think uh, probably the most, probably the best foreign-born player as of uh, as of date was uh, Hakeem Olajuwon. Obviously, all of you know him; he's a hell of a basketball player. And I think, however, but I think the first sign of what the NBA was going to become was when Yao Ming uh, was introduced to the NBA. When Yao Ming came in the NBA, I believe it was around the year 2001, 2002, if I'm not mistaken, 2003, when he was introduced uh, to the Houston Rockets, that's when we really got a taste of what the future could possibly uh, look like. And since then, uh, you know, since Yao Ming, we've had some great players in the NBA to come through. And one of them, since Yao Ming, I think one of the probably the best foreign players since Yao Ming uh, was Dirk Nowinski, who was of German descent, who was actually born uh, in, um, you know, in, Ger in Germany. And if you look at the NBA right now, the last MVP winners, not the last winner, the last MVP recipients have been foreign players. You think of Nikola Jokic and you think of Giannis Antetokounmpo. Both of these guys are foreign born players. They're, they're, they're not American by any uh, uh, stretch of the imagination. And I've always felt that there's kind of been this unspoken bias against Giannis Antetokounmpo. Giannis Antetokounmpo. There have been a lot of players in the NBA they do well, and people are quickly, you know, they, they, they're they quick to heap praise on them. But whenever it comes to Giannis, people always try to find a way to cut him off at the legs. We've done numerous videos on this, and it's something that a lot of people, uh, that, it's something that, that is that has resonated with a lot of the viewers, or at least the people that have um, that have watched those videos. But now it seems as if uh, Joel Embiid, who's arguably uh, the best big man in the NBA right now, basically came out there and... Uh, Pretty much just let the cat out of the bag and pretty much said what a lot of us have been thinking and a lot of us have been saying and a lot of us that have been thinking it that have not uh, said it. So what we want to do here is play a quick audio from Joel Embiid when he was talking about, you know, the possibility of there being, you know, foreign players be really dominating the NBA. And he sees no issue with the best player in the NBA being a foreign born player, not American. So take a listen to some of his comments there. I'm happy that, you know, guys like me, Pascal or whatever, like. You know, just coming in here, uh, you know, just taking advantage of this opportunity and uh, knowing that, you know, you guys have always had everything uh, and we didn't. Uh, so, you know, to me, it's, it's good to see, you know, you know, guys, foreign guys coming in here and, you know, showing them that, you know, although, you know, basketball is bigger in America, uh, but that, you know, doesn't have to be an American basketball player who's the best. So. Uh, he's good. What I think Joel Embiid is stating is what we call the obvious in the English language. He's he's saying what's he's pretty much saying what we all know and maybe what some people are afraid to admit. But let's just be honest about it. Four of the top ten NBA players right now are foreign born players. Luca, uh Joel Embiid, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Nikola Jokic. Whatever you think, these guys are in the top ten. If you're gonna name ten NBA players, and say these guys are the best players, you cannot have a serious list or a list that people take seriously if you don't mention at least three out of those four players I just mentioned. There's no way you can omit any of them from the league whatsoever. And there's a strong possibility that the next or the current, or if we look at if we look at MVP winners in a, in a four-year window, that all of these guys can be foreign-born players. Think about it. Giannis Antetokounmpo won two regular, two back-to-back 
uh, regular season MVPs. Then you have Nikola Jokic, and there's a strong possibility uh, that Joel Embiid could possibly win the MVP this year. So what does that say about the direction that the sport is going through? And that's really the part I want to get into here. So let me give you guys uh, my thoughts on this. I think, in my personal opinion, I think this is great for the NBA, and I think it is great for competition. I think the NBA should be a competitive I think I think the NBA should be competitive on a global stage. And I think no one should feel a certain sense of entitlement that maybe because I'm from this place or maybe because I went to this school, maybe because I went to this junior league or whatever it is, I deserve to be in the NBA. I think that I think that is I, I, I think that is bad for the game. I think that the game should be open up to the world and you should be competing against truly the best players in the world and i think nba fans should have should have an opportunity on a night-to-night -night basis to see the best players in the world i think that is what enhances enhances the game and i think it also and I, and I think it also grows the game Giannis has an international appeal whether people like it or not Giannis is, a, is, is he's an international superstar because he brings so many part of he brings so many uh, parts of the world into the NBA. You think of Europe, the Greece. You think of uh, Nigeria. You think of Africa. You think the United States. People will love him in the states. He's good for basketball. We need more of that if we're going to expand the league. So I think that's the first thing. I don't think a sense of entitlement. Uh, you know, I, you know, I don't think the sense the, 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 the sense of entitlement should be the number one. Number two, I think the best players in the NBA moving forward, the top ten best play, players in the NBA, you should expect probably a 50-50 split. Because the game is getting better. Something that Kobe Bryant mentioned when uh, when they came up with the Redeem team. He said people were walking in there expecting to beat these other teams without realizing that the world is caught up. Like these other leagues and these other teams and these other players around the world have caught up to the NBA. And it's one of the reasons why they lost. You know, one of those, I think they got the, what is it, the bronze medal. Because you walked in there assuming everybody's just going to lay down for us. And that's not the case anymore. The, the, the game is getting better. And I think um, I think is in the best interest for the league because I think the league, they I think I think the job of the league and the, and the major interest of this league is to continue to grow the sport. Look at all of the different leagues they're setting up around the world in Europe and Africa. That's what the NBA is transfixed on. They want to grow. They want to grow. They want to grow their brand for better or for worse. I think um, uh, I think that's what they, uh, what they want to do. And finally. This is the part that I really want to get to here. And I think this is the part that a lot of people need to listen to, especially American born players, because I'm American too. So y'all better be listening up to this part. I think that Joel Embiid's comments and a lot of the data that I put for and a lot of the data that we that we put forward in this video, I think is a good wake up call for a lot of American born players to realize that it's time to sit up and realize that your place in the NBA isn't guaranteed any longer it is not guaranteed it should also be a reality check to realize that there are other players out there in the world that are coming from harsher environments and tougher situations than you and they have more of a fire in their belly than you do even if you come from an impoverished neighborhood in the united states you cannot compare it to these you know third world countries and what other people you, i'm sorry you can't Unless you're going to get on a plane and travel around the world and look at other ghettos and look at other harsh realities that other people are living, you cannot open your mouth and talk about, oh, what I'm facing in the United States. It's just not it's not the reality. And when you say that, it makes it seem as if you're totally out of touch with what's happening in the world. You cannot say that. You cannot say that an issue that you have in the United States is, uh, um, what is it, constant light supply or clean water to drink or good roads, uh, security. And you, you can't even mention that. As bad as, as bad as it is in the States, it's better than a lot of places in the world. And I think that that's something people need to realize because these guys are coming to the States and they're, they're, they're just going to simply outwork you because the things that you're going to take for granted, these guys are going to look at it as a luxury. It's one of the reasons I kept on saying people are talking about, oh, Giannis could leave because he wants to go to Miami. He could go to LA. I'm like, Giannis don't care about none of that, man. Y'all are talking about going to the sun, flossing at the, flossing at the mall. These dudes don't care about that. They're looking at the opportunity that they have in front of them, and they're making the most of it. Giannis is a byproduct of a talented player that worked extremely hard on his basketball game. And I think this is what Giannis truly represents. He is the living embodiment of globalization in the NBA. And Joel Embiid and these guys are beginning to state the obvious. So to the American-born players watching this video, it's time to sit up. 
40% of the top 10 NBA players in the world right now are foreign. And it's going to continue to trend in that in, in that direction. And the NBA doesn't care. They will put anybody of, as a face as long as it makes them money. So I think this is what Joel Embiid is talking about. And I think uh, and I think it's, it, there's no question that Giannis has been the most dominant NBA player over the last two years. And he's a foreign-born player. And that says a lot. So what I want to know from you guys, is what do you think about the comments that Joel Embiid made? And what do you think about some of the comments that I made in this video? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. And we'll definitely catch you guys on the next episode. Peace.